Good day everyone, I'm Momshi Roxanne and welcome to my channel. In the previous video, we discussed the rules of syntax, sentence structure, and constituents and constituency tests. Today, we have syntax part 2. In this video, we will be discussing syntactic categories, lexical and functional categories, and phrase structure trees and rules. Do you remember our tree diagram in the previous video, The Child Found a Puppy? The Child Found a Puppy is a member of a large family of similar expressions. Look at the following examples. A police officer found a puppy. Your neighbor found a puppy. This yellow cat found a puppy. The child belongs to a family that includes the police officer, your neighbor, this yellow cat, he, John, and countless others. We can substitute any member of this family for the child without affecting the grammaticality of a sentence, although the meaning, of course, would change. A family of expressions that can substitute for one another without loss of grammaticality is called a syntactic category. The child, a police officer, John, and so on belong to the syntactic category noun phrase or NP, one of the several syntactic categories in English and every other language in the world. NPs or noun phrases may function as the subject or as an object in a sentence. NPs often contain a determiner like a or the and a noun, but they may also consist of a proper name, a pronoun, a noun without a determiner, or even a clause or a sentence. Even though a proper noun like John and pronouns such as he and him are single words, they are technically noun phrases or NPs because they pattern like NPs in being able to fill a subject or object or other NP slots. Look at the following sentences. John found the puppy. He found the puppy. Boys love puppies. The puppy loved him. The puppy loved John. NPs can be more complex as illustrated by the sentence, the girl that Professor Snape loved married the man of her dreams. The NP subject of this sentence is the girl that Professor Snape loved, and the NP object is the man of her dreams. Syntactic categories are part of a speaker's knowledge of syntax. That is, speakers of English know that only items A, B, E, and F, and G in the following list are NPs even if they have never heard the term noun phrase before. Let's see. A bird. The red banjo. Have a nice day with a balloon the woman who was laughing it john went so a a bird b the red banjo e the woman who was laughing f it and g john are noun phrases there are other syntactic categories. The expression found a puppy is a verb phrase or VP. A verb phrase always contains a verb V and it may contain other categories such as noun phrase or prepositional phrase PP which is a preposition followed by a noun phrase such as in the park, on the roof, with a balloon. The VPs are those phrases that can complete the sentence, the child blank. Inserting A, saw a clown, C, slept, E, ate the cake, F, found the cake in the cupboard, and G, realized that the earth is round, will produce grammatical sentences, whereas the insertion of B, which is a bird, or D, would result in an ungrammatical sentence. Thus, A, C, E, F, G are verb phrases. And we also have lexical and functional categories. Syntactic categories include both phrasal categories such as NP, VP, ADJP, which is adjective phrase, PP, which is prepositional phrase, 
and ADVP, which is adverbial phrase, as well as lexical categories such as noun, N, verb, V, preposition, P, adjective, ADJ, and adverb, ADV. Each lexical category has a corresponding phrasal category. Let's study the following examples. We have noun. Examples are puppy, boy, soup, happiness, fork, kiss, pillow, cake, cupboard. We have verb. Find, run, sleep, throw, realize, see, try, want, believe. Preposition. Up, down, across, into, from, by, with. Adjective, red, big, candid, hopeless, fair, idiotic, lucky. And we have adverb, again, careful, luckily, never, very, fairly. So we have the categories noun phrase, verb phrase, adjective phrase, adverb phrase, and prepositional phrases. Many of these categories may already be familiar to you. As mentioned earlier, some of them are traditionally referred as parts of speech. Other categories may be less familiar, for example, the category determiner or that, which includes the articles a and the, as well as demonstratives such as this, that, this, and those, and counting words such as each and every. Another less familiar category is auxiliary, which includes the verbs have, had, be, was, were, and the modals may, might, can, could, must, shall, should, will, and would. Auxiliary and determiner are functional categories, so-called because their members have a grammatical function rather than a descriptive meaning. For example, determiners specify whether a noun is indefinite or definite, a boy versus the boy, or the proximity of the person or object to the context, this boy versus that boy. Auxiliaries provide the verb with a time frame, whether ongoing, like John is dancing, completed in the past, like John has danced, or occurring in the future, like John will dance. Auxiliaries may also express notions such as possibility, like John may dance, or necessity, like John must dance, and so on. All languages have syntactic categories such as N, V, and NP. Speakers know the syntactic categories of their own language, even if they do not know the technical terms. And now the phrase structures trees and rules. Now that you already have a background regarding constituent structure and grammatical categories, you're now ready to learn how these sentences are constructed. In this section, please remember the word generate, which is a technical term for describe or specify the different kinds of structures. Generate. Now, let's study the tree diagram on your screen. The tree diagram provides labels for each of the constituents of the sentence, the child found a puppy. These labels show that the entire sentence belong to the syntactic category of S. Because the S node encompasses all the words, it also reveals that the child and a puppy belong to the category NP, that is, they are noun phrases and that found a puppy belongs to the category VP or is a verb phrase consisting of a verb and an NP or a noun phrase. It also reveals the syntactic category of each of the words in the sentence. A tree diagram with syntactic category information is called a phrase structure tree or a constituent structure tree. This tree shows that a sentence is both a linear string of words and a hierarchical structure with phrases nested in phrases. Phrase structure trees, or PS trees for short, are explicit graphic representation of a speaker's knowledge of the structure of the sentence of his language.
PS trees represent three aspects of a speaker's syntactic knowledge. First one is the linear order of words in the sentence. The second one is the identification of the syntactic categories of words and groups of words. And the third is the hierarchical structure of the syntactic categories. For example, an S is composed of an NP followed by a VP. A VP is composed of a V that may be followed by an NP and so on. A PS tree is a formal device of representing the speaker's knowledge of the structure of sentence in his language, as revealed by our linguistic institutions. As what I have mentioned earlier, the S dominates every node. A node is said to immediately dominate the categories one level below it. VP immediately dominates V and NP, the categories of which it is composed. Categories that are immediately dominated by the same node are sisters. V and NP are sisters in the phrase structure tree of the child found a puppy. Rule number one explicitly says that S dominates NP and VP. In English, a noun phrase may contain a determiner followed by a noun. Look at rule number two, NP, that, N. The rule conveys two facts. A noun phrase can contain a determiner followed by a noun in that order, or a determiner followed by a noun is a noun phrase. The English NP looks like the subtree. Rule 1 says that a sentence, S, contains immediately dominates an NP and a VP in that order. Rule 3 says that a verb phrase consists of a verb, V, followed by an NP. These rules are general statements and do not refer to any specific VP, V, or NP. The subtrees represented by rules 1 and 3 are as follows. A VP need not contain an object, however. It may include a verb alone, as in the following sentences. The woman laughed, the man danced, the horse galloped. These sentences have the following structure. Thus, a tree must have a VP that immediately dominates V as specified by rule number 4, which is therefore added to the grammar. We have VP dominates V. These sentences contain prepositional phrases following the V or the verb. The puppy played in the garden. The boat sailed up the river. A girl laughed at the monkey. The ship dog rolled in the mud. Now study the PS3 diagram of those prepositional phrases. Now focus on this tree diagram. In this kind of structure, we need rules 5 and 6. VP dominates V and NP, and PP dominates P and NP. We may classify the sentence, the puppy played in the garden, into two parts. We have NP and VP. NP, the puppy, and VP played in the garden. NP is composed of the terminer the, and a noun, poppy. And VP is composed of a verb, played, and a prepositional phrase. The prepositional phrase is composed of a preposition in and a noun phrase with the determiner the and the noun garden. Another option open to the VP is to contain or embed sentence. For example, the sentence, the professor said that the student passed the exam, contains the sentence, the student passed the exam. Preceding the embedded sentence is the word that, which is a complementizer, C. C is a functional category, like auxiliary and determiner. For embedded sentences, we need to add two new rules to the set of phrase structure rules. So we have VP dominates V and CP, and CP dominates C and S. CP stands for complementizer phrase. 
Rule 8 says that CP contains a complementizer such as that followed by the embedded sentence. Other complementizers are if and whether. Let's study the PS3 diagram of the sentence with a complementizer. The professor said that the student passed the exam. So let's see. Will you identify first the embedded sentence in this structure? Yes, you're right. The student passed the exam. That is the embedded sentence. But the whole sentence says, The professor said that the student passed the exam. Of course, we start it with S, the S node, which is composed of the NP and the VP. The NP is composed of the determiner the and the noun professor. The VP is composed of the verb said, and here comes the CP, which is the complementizer phrase, where we can locate the embedded sentence. So the CP is composed of the C, the complementizer, which is that. And as you can see, there is S after the CP. It means to say that we are starting for another S node. And this S node is composed again of an NP and a VP. NP is composed of the determiner the and a noun student. And the VP is composed of the verb past and the noun phrase with the determiner the and the noun exam. So that is the structure of this sentence. So to sum it up, here are the PS rules that we have discussed so far. We have eight rules. We have S dominates NP, VP. NP dominates determiner and noun. VP dominates V and P. VP dominates V. VP dominates VPP. And PP dominates P and NP. VP dominates V and CP. And CP dominates C and S.